Uh, we're going to be spending the next uh, few hours uh, sharing about an area that has actually become more and more important even in the last few months, uh, given everything that's going on in the world. Uh, specifically, we'll be sharing about VMware's newest DR as a service solution. And uh, this is called VMware Cloud Disaster Recovery. So we've got a great set of uh, sessions and speakers lined up for you. My name is Mark Chuang. I lead a product marketing for this business area. And I'll be kicking things off with a solution overview. But following me, you're going to hear from Sazal Reddy, a chief technologist, Nabil Quadri, you know, group product manager. And we really wanted to give you uh, a real kind of in-depth look and feel at the solution itself. So you'll see that in our agenda, we've got um, three sessions that are demo oriented in which you're going to get a chance to look at the solution itself. And so uh, for those three sessions, we'll have uh, Michael McLaughlin, uh, Senior Technical Marketing Architect. So with that, we're going to go ahead and dive in. Uh, for my solution session, I'm just going to spend a few minutes up front just sharing about what we continue to observe in the marketplace. And then from there, pretty quickly dive into an overview of the end-to-end -end DR as a service. Um, and that'll provide the context as we go into the subsequent sessions where, of course, we're going to double click into more of the product and the technical aspects. All right. So, I mean, we're all broadcasting from home. So uh, pandemic, obviously, the biggest news uh, of this entire year. And what's happening is that we believe there is going to be a permanent shift relative to uh, business priorities here. Uh, showing some research here from IDC, where even if you compare the priorities as shared by technology decision makers from January compared to May, two things have just skyrocketed up in regards to what's on the, uh, the top of their priority list, right? One, continuing business operations, and two, caring for their customers. And we believe this shift is not just temporary because fundamentally, digital transformation has been accelerated. So what may have taken place over several years has just been compressed down to less than a year. And frankly, that just comes from the fact that as partner, customer, employee interactions all go online, right, digital interactions, the services, the applications, the infrastructures to back that up has um, now become more and more important because that's, that's how your interactions are taking place. What we're seeing from the type of events that they're protecting from, right? Here's a sample from uh, when we heard from our customers directly. Now, if you take a look at the list itself, nothing here is like surprising in terms of the actual list. But if you take a look at the pie chart, you do see that ransomware kind of heads and shoulders is uh, coming in higher than the other factors that you know are classified here for DR events. Um, natural disasters, you know, is still in that top three. And that's traditionally what we think about when we talk about disasters. But even that has got a unique twist to it now as well. Just sharing a personal example, um, I live in California. And over the last summers, we've had major, major issues with wildfires uh, caused by climate change that have led to us uh, as a normal part of life during the summers, you know, constantly having to monitor, is the utility company gonna shut down our power in order to you know, uh, decrease uh, wildfire risks? Um, and so I, I share that story because I'm, I'm hearing those type of stories more and more, where even with natural disasters, um, there's that additional heightened sense to it being a significant issue because of the climate change that is occurring, you know, all across the globe here. So the net of all this really is, you know, DR uh, has become an even more critical uh, requirement for organizations. Summing that up, right? Um, when you take a look at an even broader set of respondents, uh, folks like Gartner, their surveys are saying that 
you know, more than three out of four of their respondents have had at least one incident in the last two years that required an ITDR plan. Uh, in that same exact report, actually over 50% of them had um, at least two. Switching over to the cybersecurity threats, uh, over one out of two have experienced at least one or more sensitive data breaches just in the last 12 months. And in terms of preparedness, uh, less than one out of five, right here at the 17%, regularly test their DR solutions. And from a best practices point of view, it is super important to test in order for you to increase your confidence. And uh, we're gonna actually show you how VMware Cloud Disaster Recovery handles that in, in one of the uh, upcoming sessions. It's, it's not that customers don't understand this, but they're like, here are my challenges. It's complex, it's expensive. Uh, testing is difficult, it's disruptive. And data growth, right? Another major issue they're facing where yes, I can keep up with growing my data on my primary site, but in the world of constrained budgets, uh, I'm having a really hard time keeping up with that data growth in my secondary site when I try to do traditional DR by owning, maintaining, operating, managing my own DR site. It's in this environment that we introduced VMware Cloud Disaster Recovery just a few months ago. And it is based on technology from the Datrium acquisition that VMware has made. And uh, I'm now gonna share an overview of the solution itself and why we were just so excited about bringing this solution to market. Okay. It starts with you know, what I've got here on the slide in the lower left-hand side. You're protecting uh, workloads that are running on your on-premises vSphere environment, supporting you know, uh, the different storage options that uh, vSphere naturally supports. And where you're failing over to in the case of a disaster is what on this slide here, I've got on the upper right-hand side. So you're failing over to VMware Cloud on AWS. The kind of heart and soul though of the disaster recovery service is what I'm starting to capture here in the blue box. So all of your management interface, the run book orchestration engine, all of that that creates that automation and, and making it a lot easier to use is a cloud-based service, right? It's delivered to you as a SaaS. And so it's represented here as the SaaS orchestrator. And on-premises, we've got an OVA uh, that does the replication of the things that you, you know, the VMs that you check off to say, this is what's important, my tier one, my tier two, my tier three protection groups, et cetera. And so that is what's performing the replication in steady state. It's replicated onto this second piece I've now highlighted in the blue box, our scale out cloud file system, right? It's a, it's a very unique and innovative file system that Cezala is gonna talk a lot more about. Because at the end of the day, right, to truly have that compelling DR as a service, uh, you've got to do more than just kind of a, a, a simple dump of a copy onto cloud storage, right? DR as a service requires so much more than that. And so you're storing these replicated copies on your scale out file system that sits in the cloud. And so the copies themselves are sitting on top of cloud storage. And then when a test event or a uh, actual failover event occurs and you kind of you know, hit that big red failover button, then th there's another very innovative part about the scale out file system that kicks in where you're able to do what we call a live mount of those replicated VM copies sitting on the scale out file system and you're able to have it instantly show up right, as an NFS volume attached to the ESX hosts that are part of your VMC cluster here in VMware Cloud on AWS. Okay, so that live mount says that you're able to get those VMs powered up as soon as this infrastructure is available. And in the background, right, we start doing the full data rehydration in order to get to full production performance. Now, the other very um, 
purposeful design in this solution is that for your failover capacity, you can have this come up completely on demand. And so it's only in the case of a test or a failover event that you spin up this capacity here. Later on, we will talk about one other option that we call a pilot light that enables you to pre-provision a small footprint so that you can get even faster recovery times if that's what your business requires. But even in that case, you know, it's a small footprint as opposed to having to pre-provision the entire estate. And so the combination of this on-demand nature on the failover capacity and the steady state storage on the cloud storage is where you're getting the benefits of that cloud economics. So the way we describe this solution is at the end of the day, it's delivering on-demand disaster recovery as a easy to use SaaS solution and organizations get the benefit of the cloud economics. Quick question, is this only available for VMC, so for AWS? And will, there be, uh, will this be available for the Google offering and the uh, Azure offering as well? Great question. Y yes, today it is only available on VMware Cloud on AWS. However, as part of VMware's overall multi-cloud strategy, you know, our intention is to be able to support additional clouds as well. You know, but uh, you know, that, that, those would be future plans. But strategically, it is aligned with VMware's multi-cloud strategy. This uh, SaaS orchestrator, how, how does this differentiate from Site Recovery Manager? Or is it a Site Recovery Manager-like appliance that does that kind of uh, orchestration between your production site and your DR site? Um, are we using um, VMware's replication engine under the hood to do the syncs between production site to your uh, SDDC uh, cluster? And then finally, um, the scale out storage, I guess we're going to uh, some kind of object store location and then the rehydration stuff that you're talking about is moving it from the object store over to the, uh, the vSAN cluster that's available to your SDC cluster uh, information so to bring up. So the pilot light would be some kind of already uh, linkage between the S3 object store and the uh their your pilot information and i might be jumping ahead yeah so i apologize if i, if I did no all, all great questions stephen uh, i'll answer them actually in reverse order uh your understanding of uh, live mount is uh, absolutely correct right so what you've got here is the replicated copies that uh, do sit on object store so that was your second question and the rehydration that i mentioned is uh, that rehydration of data from the object store to the vSAN uh, primary storage that's here in BMC. Um, in regards to your question about the SaaS orchestrator, uh, it is serving a very similar function to what sounds like you're used to with Site Recovery Manager in terms of you know, run books and creating protection groups and automated workflows, both for failover and failback. It is, we're not using the SRM engine here, okay? But from a purpose standpoint, it is serving that same purpose. And then uh, finally, to your question about the replication technology, uh, in this case, it is using uh, technology that was developed by Datrium. And again, you know, we'll be uh, sharing a little bit more about that in some of the uh, deep dive uh, sessions that are coming up after me. Hey, Mark, I have a question about the licensing model. Uh, is it based per protected VM, per protected capacity? How does it work to get started? Yeah, so uh, it actually is both in the sense that uh, we say, hey, customers, go ahead and just tell us how many protected VMs that you plan to protect. And then secondly, you know, let's figure out for you how much protected capacity that you need. And so uh, it is actually two pricing metrics and the customer once we engage in that conversation, we're able to come up with an overall price. All right, so there was one more build on this slide and it's also about, great, I've got it failed over, uh, but in most cases we expect that they're gonna eventually wanna fail back, right? 
And so even in the built-in workflow for the failback, the team paid a lot of attention into how can we do this in a way that really fits the cloud model well. <clears throat> so in this last build here, where we call out the Delta-based failback, even then the system is being really smart about understanding what are the changes in the data, right, in the VMs that has occurred since my initial failover event. And we're making sure that those are those changes are the only blocks that we're transferring back because uh, that's a way that we're optimizing for the egress charges that of course are a very natural part of the uh, public cloud world. So a little bit of a summary here, right? The three key tenants, right? On the on-demand fast recovery side, you've got the live mount capability. You've got the pilot light if you want even faster capability. And one thing I didn't mention earlier is that you don't have to do any VM format conversions end-to-end -end in any of the flow that we talked about. We believe that speeds up the recovery times and it also reduces the risk a lot because you're not having to do VM format conversions. And all of this is super important for use cases, like when you're trying to figure out, oh my goodness, I've got hit by a ransomware, how can I quickly recover from that? In terms of ease of use, you've got that consistent, familiar VMware vCenter environment across both your production as well as your failover site. So organizations and their IT teams don't have to learn a new set of tools, right, in terms of operating their failover environment. We've talked about the SaaS-based nature of this. Um, but earlier when I made the comment about testing, you know, we, the, the team was very proactive about trying to think through all the things that make it difficult to do DR. So there's built-in continuous DR health checks that just automatically run in the background every 30 minutes. And if it detects that something's not right, it's going to alert you and tell you that, right? So that type of automation, proactive automation, really helps to boost the confidence level. And we wanted to make it easy for that uh, overworked administrator to be able to uh, show the auditors everything they've got in place. So built-in audit reports in order to generate that paper trail. And then finally, with cloud economics, um, I've already talked about the ability to pay for the capacity when you need it on the failover. In steady state, you're storing it in efficient cloud storage. We're working to just really simplify the way customers have to think about pricing. It just comes down to tell us how many VMs you're protecting and tell us the total amount of protected capacity. And then the last example I shared about, you know, even in optimizing the failbacks to make sure that we're delivering uh, uh, really thinking about things from, you know, uh, value, of course, but then also driving low total cost of ownership. So as a segue now to uh, some of my other speakers, uh, where you're going to hear us double click into as we share more about the solution itself, you know, we'll obviously get into the technical and the product details, but it really all comes down to these four objectives that we are striving for, right? end-to-end uh, -end DR solution that's going to deliver that total cost of ownership with fast recovery capabilities, you know, do it in a way that is easy to use and make sure that it is highly reliable because obviously you're dealing with organizations' critical business data here and uh, their ability and having that confidence to get it back up and running is a big part of what they're looking for when they choose a solution. <clears throat> 